think it's a time to uh, start the session in uh, the afternoon. Uh, we will have the free paper for uh, Cardio Public Mind Pass and Proliferative uh, uh, session. So, uh, firstly, we, we hope to have uh, seven paper, but uh, 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 by now only a uh, five paper. Uh, the presenter should be used not more than ten minutes. It means, uh, if possible, please uh, present only eight minutes, and we leave uh, two minutes for uh, Q and A. All right. Okay. Now may we, uh, oh, oh, sorry, may I introduce uh, myself, Sompo Pratani, and uh, my co-chair, uh, Dr. Pramod Parapakham. So, may I start the first paper? Uh, we will be presented by uh, Dr. Ampai Pantana, and she will present the acute kidney injury after Ultrafiltrating filtration during cardiac surgery in patients with chronic kidney disease. Okay, please. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Amai Pantana. I'm a professionist from Faculty of Medicine, Chiang Mai University, Thailand. Today, I'm going to present the study entitled Acute Kidney Injury After Ultrafiltration During Cardiac Surgery and the Chronic Kidney Disease Patient. I have no financial conflict to this course. First of all, I would like to thank my study team, Dr. Titipong and Ms. Ganjana, for their cooperation and encouragement. The acute kidney injury is a common and potentially serious post-operative complication after cardiac surgery. The incidence of the cardiac surgery associated with acute kidney injury is up to 30% and is dependently associated with the increase of the morbidity, mortality, and length of hospital stay, especially in the chronic kidney disease patient. The UNTA filtration during cardiac surgery is one of the techniques that be used to prevent the major organ dysfunction during cardiopulmonary bypass. This technique removes the plasma water and low molecular weight solute by a chronic process using hydrostatic force across a semi-permeable membrane. The UNTA filtration techniques has been attributed in our hospital since 2012. There are two most common methods, including continuous UNTA filtration and modified UNTA filtration. The continuous UNTA filtration is performed during the cardiopulmonary bypass. This technique is used for management of the volume overload in the patient with renal insufficiency. And the modified UNTA filtration is performed immediately after the separation from the cardiopulmonary bypass. This technique is more effective in removing excess volume from the patient and can remove inflammatory mediator generated during the cardiopulmonary bypass. However, the numerous report have described the result of cardiac surgery in a patient with end-state renal disease. But few studies have evaluated the result of cardiac surgery in patients with mild renal insufficiency. So the objective of this study was to evaluate the effects of the combined continuous UNTA filtration and modified UNTA filtration on reducing the acute kidney injury after cardiac surgery in patients with chronic kidney disease state 3 and state 4. We retrospectively review patients who underwent cardiac surgery discharge from our hospital between 2013 and 2018. A total of 24 patients with chronic kidney disease state 3 and state 4 who using the combined continuous UNTA filtration and modified UNTA filtration technique during cardiac surgery was used for data analysis. The patient's characteristics include 8, 6, pre-operative serum ketamine, number of hospital stay, receiving of renal replacement therapy, and the incident of acute kidney injury. 
The incident of acute kidney injury was measured by using the acute kidney injury network or akin classification 2007. The acute kidney injury is defined by the sudden decrease of renal function in 38 hours and defined by increase of absolute serum creatinine and decrease in the urine output. The descriptive statistics was used to describe characteristic and categorical variable. And due to the small sample size, physical exercise test was used to analyze the incidence of acute kidney injury in chronic kidney disease patients. This table shows the results of the study. Majority of the patients were male with the mean age of 63 and 62 years old. The mean of the pre operative serum creatinine were 1.89 and 2.69 in the chronic kidney disease patients, state 3 and state 4, respectively. The incidence of the acute kidney injury was 33% in the chronic kidney disease patients, state 3 whereas the acute kidney injury was 50% in chronic kidney disease state 4. Renal replacement therapy was not shown in the both group after the cardiac surgery. The mortality rate was 0% in each. The average of the range of hospital stay in chronic kidney disease patients state 3 was less than in chronic kidney disease state 4. However, there was no statistic significant difference in the incidence of acute kidney injury after cardiac surgery. Our study based on the data from medical records, where the result may be biased. Prospective study are required to know the actual outpatient condition at the time of hospitalization and follow up. And further, the sample size was relatively small. Hence, we could not generalize our finding to all patients underwent the cardiac surgery. In conclusion, we found that the use of the UNTA filtration technique was effective on reducing the acute kidney injury in chronic kidney disease patients. However, the further study are required to identify patients who will the most benefit from using combination of the continuous UNTA filtration and modified UNTA filtration. Thank you for your attention. Any question from the floor? You, you, you use every case now for, for the grade 3 and 4 uh, chronic kidney disease? In some cases, we have the limitation in the budget or the cost of the patient, but sometimes we have to discuss what, with my surgeon what, what uh, which patient who need to do for combined cuff and muff. Mm -hmm. It means you... No, no, no definite criteria now to use in each case. Yes. Uh, I see. It's maybe the further study if my surgeon accept for do this. Mm -hmm. how, how, about, uh, how about the blood test for, for, for each case you mm -hmm. use? Uh, for the humor filtration cost is 2,000 baht. Yeah. And the and solution for dialysis is maybe three to five thousand baht. Okay. Yeah. It is mean you will add more five thousand each case? Yes. Okay. Okay, please. Uh, my name is Dr. Nalong Lit from uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, did you have, have ever have a chance to compare the patients who have the chronic kidneys state three and four who use uh, your conventional technique and use your technique? Yes. <coughs> And uh, how about the results? I would like to know. Thank you. Now, um, do the retrospective review in the patient with uh, using UNTA filtration, but now you, we don't analyze for the data. Maybe it's next, uh, next chance to present in the next meeting. So. What, what, what is your, 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 your thought, your observe, observation? Is it different? use and not use 
in uh, the same grade. Is it different? In my opinion, it show the benefit from the patient is that I will have show the change in the serum ketamine exposed of start. It decreased from the baseline. Every patient we do this technique. I see. Because in, in your paper, you said that, uh, the incident of AKI in set three and four, uh, even though you use this technique, it's 33 for set three and yes. four, state and four for 50%. 50, yes. So it still, it still look high. Yes, so it's still high, but it's not used. The patient don't do all the renal replacement therapy, and after three or four days, the serum gain is maybe come down to the baseline. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next paper will be uh, presented by uh, Dr. Kasisak Luong Luong Patum. Ram. Uh, he will be uh, pursuing a comparison of a single dose cardioplegia in valvular heart surgery, del needle versus custodial HTK. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Co Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, for my uh, subject of my paper, I will add uh, the word modify to the uh, before the del needle. I will tell you why. The single dose cardioplegias have been proved benefit and safety in valvular house surgery. It helps minimize the interruption during surgery that result to improve surgical workflow. We have to type up the single dose cardioplegia right now. That's it, the uh, del needle and custodial HTK. This is the component of each solution. Why custodial HTK is intracellular crystalloid cardioplegia. In contrast, del needle cardioplegia can be classified as extracellular blood cardioplegia. And because of unavailability of Plasma light A in Thailand, we use lactate drinker solution as the best solution for del needle instead. So I will call it like modified del needle solution. In order to evaluate the ability of myocardial protection during waffular heart surgery, our study aim to compare these two types of single dose cardioplegia, the custodial and the modified del needle. We had retrospectively reviewed from January 2017 to May 2018 all adult patients more than 18 years old who underwent elective valve, valvular heart surgery without concomitant operations such as the cap patch were included. There were a total 71 patients. 37 was in modified del needle group and the remaining was in the custodial HTK group. Patient characteristic and post-operative outcomes were defined at Society of Thoracic Surgeons Adult Cardiac Surgical Database. The outcomes between group were then compared. The volume of both cardioprejects was different as the needle was started at one lead after aortic cause came, but so they all was start at a 1.5 lit. The redosing was given after 90 minutes or, or if the, there was heart activity. The redosing volume was very depend on the remaining procedure left in the each operation. Operations were given cardioplegia via, via integrate loop or the record for the patient with uh, aortic regurgitation. Continuous data were reports at mean with standard deviation or mean with interquartile range and compared by the independent sample T-test or man fitness U-test. Categorical data were present as 
frequency with percentage and analyzed by chi-square or Fisher exact test. The statistically significant was defined at p-value lower than 0.05. This table shows the baseline characteristic of the patient. We know that most of the baseline characteristics such as age, gender, BMI, body surface area, underlying disease, and calculated STS mortality risk were similar in both groups. The only difference is the preoperative left ventricular ejection fraction. It seems to be higher in the Cusodial HTK group. The type of operation were not significant difference. During entire operative period, the modified neonatal groups exhibit the significant lower total volume of cardioprecia and lower incidence of ventricular fibrillation. Number of doses, aortic clamp time, CPB time, and number of AABP support were similar between groups. The post-operative peak troponin T level was not different between groups. Post-operative REF, REF change, were similar in both groups. ICU stay and duration of inotropic support were also similar. But residual transfusion and hospital stay was lower in modified neonatal group. The new onset of atrial fibrillation, complication, and mortality rate were also similar. In conclusion, our study suggests that using of modified neonatal cardioplegia associated with lower cardioplegia volume, blood transfusion, incident of ventricular fibrillation, and length of hospital stay compared to use of custodial HTK in valvular heart surgery. And, the mod and both of the modified neonatal and custodial HTK, however, the outcome was comparable. We know that there is inevitable weakness in our study with the methodology as the retrospective study. We cannot avoid the, some of the selective bias, and the sample size is maybe is quite small. But as I show you that our characteristic of the both group of patients was comparable. Thank you for your attention. Any question from the floor? Oh, yes, please. Over to the phone. So I, I would like to ask on the custodial arm. Um, uh, is there any reason why custodial has to repeat it, uh, every one and a half hour? Because as I, I mean, in my center, we repeat every three hours. Custodial. Um, I think uh, in our center, we we uh, usually use the 90 minutes to repeat those. And because of, uh, I, I think we, we know that the uh, dose of the custodial HTK is around uh, 30 milliliters per kilogram per dose in the first dose. But uh, for the adult, for our, in our center, maybe it's, I, we just use the 1.5 lit in the every case. So we, we think that if we redosing it before it has a heart activity, the, the effect of myocardial protection will be better. And uh, in, in case with uh, tricuspid valve surgery, uh, for custodial, uh, did, did, uh, did you uh, suck out the uh, plegia? from the quarry sinus or not? Or do you, you, you just leave it in the system? Because sometimes if you want to avoid the hypervolumia from crestodial, you can open the right atrium and suck out from the, uh, I mean, and that that's eliminate hypervolumia from custodial. Um, we don't do that. And uh, did you look in the 
sodium, sodium and the uh, cognitive change of patient or seizure between groups. Is there any difference between uh, serum sodium after the operation and the any incident of seizure in those uh, patients on both arms? Um, we don't collect the data as the outcome, but but as I review, it's not it's not it's uh it's almost comparable. Thank you. Uh, do you have some case you perform a uh, aortic valve replacement? Did the use of retrograde uh, uh, in infusion? No, we if. If the patient has the aortic regurgitation, we rather use the direct cardiopegia instead. Oh, I see. Do you have a problem of uh, hypervolemia in, in ICU after surgery? Because you didn't uh, remove the plagia from the uh, cori sinus. Any problem compared to, to uh, another kind of cardioplegia for Casodel? We don't we don't have the okay. that problem. Okay. Uh, I want to ask about the uh, presentation that you give the result, the hospital stay, that of the uh, the needle is increased uh, from the custodial. Can you tell tell us about the benefit? or something like that that you uh, can be saved the time of hospital stay? I, I think if we use, uh, if the patient has the less of the arrhythmia, maybe the surgeon preferring to, to the transfer patient to, to normal ward, uh, transfer from the ICU will be quicker and uh, the, and also the discharge patient from the hospital. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let me proceed to the next paper. So the next paper uh, is about the outcome of modified ultra filtration in on pump and off pump Cori artery bypass graft in renal impairment patients, which will be present by uh, Dr. Amarit Potikun. Thank you, Chairman, Co-Chairman, and audience. As we see, I come from Chiang Mai University, so we have a series about the modified auto filtrations. So you heard about the observational data of the modified auto filtrations, and I do the retrospective. And tomorrow we have the uh, RCT about the modified auto filtrations. So now let's start on my study. So right now, the concerning about the renal function still depends on the, the patient who undergone or pump on on pump. Which one is be better? Many many studies found that uh, about the on pump and the on pump is have no difference. But some paper still have a good name about the difference. Op cap may be better because we don't use the cardiopulmonary bypass. So for the mechanical that the Patient who on pumps may be worse than the patient who do the op cap because uh, they have to make mechanism about the cardiopulmonary bypass. Because when we use the CPB, because we have the hemodilution and the volume from the pumps is going in the patients. And next step, when we use the bypass, the blood is going out from the patient, going to the uh, circulatory bypass, and they have the extra vessel. They have induce many, many uh, cell or we have inflammation after we do the bypass and go back to the patient that induce cell in the patient. So uh, we develop, right now we have developed out the filtration technique to reduce the uh, inflammatory mediators and excess, uh, excess fluids from the pumps out. So 
when we apply the muff or cuff in the patient, like we do the bypass and remove the volume and remove the inflammatory mediators from the patient, like we do the pump with hemodialysis, so we can get lift of the adverse effect of the CPB. So uh, the object of this study, we compare between the patient who undergone the uh, on pump CVG with modified the filtration compared between the patient who underwent the op cap surgery in the patient with the CKD patients. Uh, for the med part is retrospective study. We include uh, all of the patients in Chiang Mai University patients from last 10 years. And we accuse a patient around 280 patients uh, for non-CKD or non muff or missing data patient to collections. And we collect the data and compare between both groups used the uh, multivariate by measurement with the uh, propensity score adjustment for the patients. <coughs> so let's see the result. Uh, for the for the demographic data, so we have found the difference between two groups. Especially, uh, we found that in the opcap patient, have more better than the patient who do uh, on pump with muff. Uh, just like patient have uh, more chronic kidney disease, more severe coronary artery disease, and when we adjust with the propensity score, the patient who have muff and opcap still have difference. So when we focus on the chronic kidney disease, we still found that the patient who do the mouth have more instead renal disease than the patient who perform the op caps. So we try to adjust by use a statistic, statistical way. For the operative data, the between two groups still have significant difference about the pre-operative uh, uh, pressure, operative times, the patient who do the mouth may, may, may be longer and maybe worse than the patient who just do the op caps. So let's do the renal, let's see the renal functions. First, we compare between creatinine used by repeating methods uh, from the baseline creatinine immediately post-op, post-op day one and the post of uh, 30 days. So we found that in the OPCAP group, the patient have creatinine rising around 0.23 and not significantly. And for the MAP group, the creatinine is rising higher, about, one, uh, about 0.4. When we compare between these two groups, we found significantly uh, the MAP group have more rising of the creatinine and we use the repeating measure and adjust by the propensity score and another significant data and still have a significant difference between these two groups of the creatinines. And when we use the another, another rival light skin clearance, uh, when we see that the opcap group has better clearance uh, when we compare between the MAF and the opcap group, but both are not significant. And about the BUN as the variable that can many, many variable, uh, the MAF group have still more rising of the BUN than the OPCAP group. And the MAF group have more rising by plus one after we perform the operations. But when we compare together with these two groups, it has no significance. About the post-operative outcome, the MAF group have worsened. Uh, like uh, ICU stay, hospital stay, ventilator support uh, for the MAP group is uh, worsening than the OPCAP group. <coughs> for the discussions, uh, we discussed about the MAP. Uh, when we perform the MAP, we perform after we done the operation, after we done the bypass. And the MAP we do on the case is around 10 or 12 minutes. Maybe the MAF is not cannot get rid of the all of the information mediator and cannot get rid of all excess volume because when we perform the operation, the volume that we give to the patient is more than we MAF and getting the volume out. Maybe the the time that we do the MAF is not enough. Uh, so the mediators and the volume still have still there in the patients and have something about the efficacy of the out of filtrations. Uh, for this study, we use the most powerful filtrations, but 
maybe like a patient who have the hemodialysis, there are still some waste thing in the patient. And the status of the patient within the MAF group, because this is a retrospective study, the MAF group is uh, worsening than the OPCAP group, like uh, uh, end-state renal disease is more than OPCAP, the patient have lower EF, the patient have more disease like this. Even we adjust by the statistic, but the patient still worsened. So, because it's retrospective and lacks of some data. So, we conclude that also the renal protective strategy, modifier of filtration in CBG of CAP for the renal function is not still not work. The cap the cap techniques is superior than the we go on pump with the MAF technique. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any question? So in uh do you have the data about the, because the creatinine level or renal function may be uh, caused from other, have risk fact, uh, other risk yes. factors, like uh, what about the hemodynamics after yes. the operation, during the operation, do you have an inotropic after the operation is? Yeah, I, I collect all the data because we have a post-operative inotropic, and we compare both group between mouth and op cap. But it has no significance between two groups about the inotrope, about the BP, about the uh, low cardiac output syndrome after that. So we, even it has no difference, we adjust by the propensity score that we assume that the patient have equally studied equal both groups and still significant different. Uh, uh, from this paper, it's mean OPCAP is uh, proper for the patient who has uh, a kidney disease, is it? Yeah, at the last session, I, I, I joined with the OPCAP and the uh, ONCAP debating. They're still debating about between two groups. But from this paper, it shows that uh, about the creatinine, the OPCAP is maybe better. It's better. Yeah. My question, a short question. Why do you do OPCAP? in every case of uh, chronic kidney disease? Because uh, they have some studies found that uh, the OPCAP may be more benefit in the patient who have renal impairment. No, no. Why, why do you do the whole of the case? Why do you uh, perform the CPB, uh, a CBG uh, with a pump? Why do you do on pump in, in the kidney disease? Uh, in your center, why you do all of the uh, kidney disease with the uh, opcap? Not 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 all cases. Uh, some cases we do with the. Uh, no no no. The question is why don't we do all oh, uh, right? uh, uh, yes. chronic kidney disease with on pump? Uh, yeah, yeah. At that time we don't know the result. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it means after that you you will perform opcap in every case of kidney disease. Uh, that, uh, that's what uh, I mean. We are in the same center, but the answer <laughs> is is impossible. Because you know, the, to do off pump, it depends on on the operator. Usually on surgeons, yes. not on patients. So it's very. I mean, okay, please, Amuri. Just a simple question. Uh, can you uh, give the example of your propensity score to match the patient? Because I, I, I see the result, and yeah. I still wonder why you include uh, the. The patient who have the different operation, you should compare the patient only the one operation, yeah. right? Uh, and if 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 you met the patient very well, so this it should not be uh, difference yeah, with, uh, with the score. First, I, I did not use the matching technique for this study. First, I tried to use the matching technique for this study, but the number of the patients is very low. It's decreased into the thirteen ish groups. So I use for the monthly level analysis to do the patient with the propensity score adjusted. So I think we need uh, more study about this, like uh, RCT or need number of the patient more than right now, because it can match, but uh, the low number of the patient. Uh, did, did you look into blood transfusion between two groups?
Oh, uh, my outcome is not sure on this study, but I, I, I look for the difference between the blood transfusion, uh, but it's not different between these two groups. I, I, the pattern I not show in my study. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So, move to the next topic. Uh, is about the efficacy of hemodynamic monitoring in cardiac surgical patients. Present by uh, Dr. Paulamin Thien Pramuk. From Konken University. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Co-Chairman, and Participant. My name is Paul Min Tembomo from Konken University. I'm proud to share my research presentation, Efficacy of Hemodynamic Monitoring in Cardiac Surgical Patients. Now, the, the, the average variability mortality currently is less than 3%. Because of advanced in surgical technique, myocardial protection, and preoperative care, the rate of major complication remain high, especially low cardiac post syndrome. It's the most common and serious complication and associated with increased healthcare resort utilization. This syndrome is characterized by decreased heartbound function leading to oxygen delivery and subsequent tissue hypoxia. The definition of low cardiac opus syndrome also shown in this slide. Risk factors for low cardiac output syndrome are advanced age, impaired ventricular function, and on cardiopulmonary bypass. So, uh, cardiac output monitoring is uh, an important tool in patients with hemodynamic instability. I will introduce the system of power control analysis. In this method, the area uh, posed actually to an up ejection phase divided by the impedance, that is the volume, and different between the maximum and minimum stroke volume over the respiratory cycle is stroke volume variation, which is more useful in predicting fluid responsiveness than static parameter such as CVP. When a monitor is used in conjunction with administration of fluid and vessel pressure to achieve the set of therapeutic endpoint as correlated therapy, thereby improve the patient care and outcome. Several systemic review and meta-analysis have assessed the efficacy of correlated therapy in cardiac surgery. Although the data indicate the benefit of for correlated therapy is not clear whether correlated therapy is more efficacious than standard of care. However, from past to present, the result has not been consistent. So the objective of this study was to analyze the efficacy and importance of portability of correlated therapy in cardiac surgery, especially in elderly who has a higher surgical risk. The first list to compare over uh, overall 30 day composite endpoint of major complications. Subsequently, to compare ICU and hospital stay between two groups. <coughs> After calculating the sample size, at least 30 patients uh, were recorded in each group. Patients who are 70 years old or older and undergoing conventional coronary artery bypass scarfing and all wall surgery were, sorry, were in course for enrollment. And the patient were excluded from this study if one of following as present. This study is consequently prospective cohort study. After screening, Total 65 patients were prospective analyzed. 35 patients received standard treatment, and 30 patients received gold directed therapy. All patients were inserted a central venous catheter and arterial catheter in operating room. A minimum mean arterial pressure of 65 mm mercury, hematocrit value higher than 30%, and urine output higher than 0.5 ml per kilogram per hour were targeted. Following ICU admission, in correlated therapy group, arterial line and venous line were connected to Fortec EB1000. And variable of volume variation, cardiac index, and systemic vascular system were you as go to deliver the hemodynamic intervention. The statistical analysis, as we show off this slide, uh, 
Now, I would like to look at the results. There were no significant different in patients with like characteristic. And the proportion of preoperative atrial fibrillation is higher in standard group. There were no significant different in preoperative status. And such a call is by Euro 2 and STS score between two groups. There were no significant in cardiac cord cam time, cardiopulmonary bypass time, and interoperative but lot between two groups. There were no significant different in post-operative blood transfusion, P2.0 T, and anotopic use in first 24 hours between two groups. 30 day composite endpoint is lower in correlated therapy group, 46 and 62 percent respectively. Local death of syndrome uh, also is the most common post-operative complication. But post-operative cardiac arrhythmia is more common in standard group. There were no significant difference in ventilator time, length of ICU stay, and hospital stay between two groups. Part box showing the median level of length of hospital stay are slightly lower in correlated therapy group. Several randomized control time and mental analysis has shown the perioperative and postoperative correlated therapy may reduce the incidence of surgery related complications in cardiac surgery. However, there was a heterogeneity for optimization and monitoring too. Our study showed cardiac output guide hemodynamic therapy in postoperative period also reduced the postoperative complication and incidence of low cardiac output syndrome. But no treatment effect on mortality rate may be explained by the relatively low, low mortality rate and need to include the large number of patients to demonstrate necessary benefit. Our study demonstrated higher incidence of low cardiac output syndrome due to older age patient and more combined operation than previous study. Although randomized control time show benefit of length of ICU and hospital stay in correlated therapy, but the recent meta-analysis show no benefit in ICU stay. However, the association to shorter length of hospital stay may suggest that Better hemodynamic balance can facilitate post-operative recovery. We have demonstrated that not only no significant difference in ICU and hospital stay, but also longer hospital stay than previous study, due to more as one eight patients who have the lower physical recovery rate. There are several limitations in our study. First thing is this is a single center and have a small sample size. So the next is uh, there are selection by in this study because of an equal in the proportion of preoperative atrial fibrillation. And this, this protocol was developed by our OHA team and involved a common agreement on hemodynamic parameter. And there are the performance and detection by ad by our patient with hemodynamic instability. We see the echocardiography to identify cause of hemodynamic instability. And the last is no information about the fertility assessment. That may be the better predictor for cardiac surgical, su surgical outcome in elderly who undergo in cardiac surgery. Then we use it only. So to summarize, cardiac output guide hemodynamic therapy not significantly due to the post-operative complication than usual care. However, morning Monitoring may, may facilitate hemodynamic balance and improve post-operative outcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the conclusion is that using hemodynamics monitoring is not help. Uh, uh, it's not. Uh, now we we have to select the patient to use it. May I ask the question about the. Uh, uh, because as I know that hemodynamics monitoring can help and can guide us, but which, whether we can use the inotrope, we can use the vasodilator or fluid challenge to, to give the patients, is there any difference in terms of uh, using inotrope between you, uh, hemodynamic guide and not, and also fluid intake is the, because there might be some time that we give unnecessarily for inotrope to the patients. Mm. 
Firstly, we have to use the physical examination to identify cause of the hemodynamic instability. If, uh, if we not use this instrument to, uh, to help to manage the hemodynamic instability, we have to, uh, to do the physical examination to palpate. The extremity is cold or warm, or the jugular vein is distant, or is adequate, adequate the volume or not. And anotopic, uh, for the anotopic or vasopressor, um, in each group, we will uh, do the echocardiography to identify cause of hemodynamic instability in our case, in our case that had the problem. <laughs> you, you don't have the data about that to show that you no know, trope in this arm and this arm, how many percent? Uh, I have, I have, uh, I, in this, this study I used the MacVis score. It's, it's a vaso, vaso active and anotopic score. It's, it's, this score is used from the calculator dose of anotopic, but I'm not, Another separate from another separate type of of duct that you such as dopamine, butamine. It is different. Different. No, for the after calculation is no different. For the routine that you use, do didn't use the primary artery. That is one can you just use the uh, in our CMP. center uh, still use Chuan can in some case. Mm -hmm. Some case that anesthesiologist uh, insert the Chuan can in some case, such as in cardio uh, conventional cabbage. In some case. Okay. Okay. One, one simple question. Uh, can you explain how you uh, measure the cardiac output and how to treat the patient with low cardiac output if, if, the, if your method uh, tell you that the patient have low cardiac output? Again, please. Uh, I just want. Uh, firstly, the low cardiac output syndrome is we have to exclude the hypovolumia first. So, uh, we, we will look at the stroke volume variation is more than 13. Uh, it means the patient maybe had a volume depletion. So we will uh, do the fluid challenge. After that, if, if, if we know that adequate volume, so we, we will look at the cardiac index and systemic vascular resistance. Because our cardiac output is, is from stroke volume multiplied with heart rate. Okay. <laughs> so the okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So the last paper is about the uh, efficacy of perioperative blood transfusion therapy using thromboelastography, presented by Dr. Yushi Okumura. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Yishio Kumula. Uh, thank you for giving me the chance uh, to speak here today. I'm here to talk about the efficacy of perioperative blood transfusion therapy using Sloan Blastography. Uh, conventionally, uh, in operation room, we know the patient's coagulopathy by uh, ACT and the number of platelets. Uh, some other coagulation data can be obtained, but it takes relatively long time. From around 2010, uh, some studies have been reported that uh, viscoelastic coagulation test can reduce the amount of perioperative blood uh, transfusion. Uh, Slumbolastography is uh, one of the viscoelastic coagulation tests, which is called TEG6. 
This scholastic test, including uh, TAG-6, was advocated in Europe guideline uh, from 2013 and US guideline in 2014. In 2019, the Japanese Society of Anesthesiologists also recommended them. So what is uh, thrombolastography? It is a novel viscolastic method which provides uh, also, uh, a comprehensive assessment of hemostasis. This shows a video. We dripped uh, the whole blood about three milliliters onto the four different types of reagents. This cartridge has the different types of reagents. Uh, as clot proceeds, it is exposed to the uh, sinusoid motion and uh, clot uh, resonance frequencies are detected, traced, and illustrated in real time. In short, uh, it can tell us, ah, uh, sorry, as uh, com compared with conventional correlation test, this test is faster and uh, simpler and more useful. Uh, so, graphy measured by a parameter using different types of reagents. Uh, the times and the speed of being proceeded clot production and the strength of clot. In short, it can tell us the logical heparin and the deficiency of fibrinogen and deficiency of uh, tissue factor uh, as a correlation factor. Uh, we especially uh, focused on the Operative CFF MA of uh, tag data uh, to determine the uh, red blood cell and fresh frozen plasma ratio during cardiopulmonary bypass. Our hospital has started to use thrombolastography and uh, tag guided new blood transfusion management during and after cardiopulmonary bypass. But I think uh, it is really uh, efficient for high-risk hemorrhage operation. So the aim of this study is to determine whether the snowballastography was useful to reduce the amount of perioperative blood transfusion uh, and postoperative bleeding or not. In total, uh, 80 uh, consecutive patients who underwent aortic surgery with deep hypothermia and circulatory arrest. Uh, we excluded uh, 60 patients, uh, which was emergency case, for example, aortic dissection and mycotic aneurysm. Uh, six patients uh, was also excluded. Uh, there are uh, least tomy case. Uh, three patients, uh, the replacement of descending aorta. We divided 55 patients into two groups, uh, which one is uh, non-tag groups, using only conventional tests uh, during operation. The other one is the tag groups, using both conventional tests and the tag test during operation. So I introduced our hospital blood transfusion strategy during operation. We sample the whole blood as a control tag data before uh, anesthetic induction. After cardiopulmonary bypass on, that blood cell is transfused to keep uh, hemoglobin over 90 blood deciliter, and flesh frozen plasma is transfused referencing the uh, preoperative uh, CFFMA. After higher pulmonary bypass off and IV protamine, uh, we check the whole blood again uh, using TED to determine the uh, amount of additional flesh frozen plasma and additional uh, protamine. Uh, platelet concentrate is transfused if the platelet count is less than 50,000. 
Okay, I'll show you a play operator pattern. A play operator uh, patient body weight in tail groups uh, tend to be heavier than that in non tail groups, and body surface area uh, in tail groups uh, was uh, significantly higher than that in non tail groups. So we assume the uh, patient's body weight as uh, 50 kilograms. The result, the amount of red blood cell transfusion. Uh, after cardiopulmonary bypass off and after operation during ICU, the amount of red blood cell transfusion in tag groups is significantly less than that in non tag groups. So the total amount of red blood cell on admission is also in tag groups uh, less than that in non tag groups. Uh, about FFP, fresh frozen plasma. Interoperative the amount of flesh frozen plasma, uh, there's no difference between two groups, but uh, the after operation, the long ICU, the amount of flesh frozen plasma in two groups is significantly less than uh, in non two groups. Plated concentrate is uh, there's no difference. Additionally, uh, we verify the other post operative data. Uh, post operative re exploration and embolic event and post operative acute kidney injury. There is no difference between two good spots. Uh, post operative bleeding from donor tube and post operative intubation time in tag groups is significantly less than that in non tag groups. Duration of IC stain, there is no change. So using tail guided blood transfusion strategy, we can reduce the amount of red blood cell after cardiopulmonary bypass off and the uh, amount of red, red blood cell and fresh frozen plasma after operation during ICU. And we can reduce the amount of post operative bleeding. Why this result uh, obtained? I think we have made up fibrinogen actively by FF transfusion during color permanent bypass, referring to the preoperative take value. And we could recognize whether coagulopathy still exists or not, and what we have to do to recover based on the result of the post operative take values. In conclusion, uh, interoperative thromboblastography was used to save the amount of blood transfusion. Uh, it is suggested that the saving the amount of blood transfusion, especially after cardiopulmonary bypass of and post operation, we can reduce post operative bleeding and intubation time. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Any question? In your series, do you have the case that? Uh, need to reoperate re for breathing in, in, in this group? Uh, I think so. Uh, the, the timing, the best. Uh, so, fle uh, flesh falls plasma it, uh, uh, is transfused uh, during cardiopulmonary bypass. So, uh, it is a key to save the post operative bleeding and post operative. Uh, transfusing. No, I have to mean that a patient need to go for stop breathing in, in operating room. What? To for re operative re operation for stop breathing. Mm -hmm. In the group, did you have a uh, re-stenotomy to stop breathing? You exclude already? You you should ah, yes. in the inclusion yes, criteria. Yes. Exclude. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm a Mizuno co-worker, co -worker, co -worker. So you mean the um, exploration for breathing, right? So we, we don't have any uh, exploration for surgery after, after we use the take therapy. <coughs> I think that we, after we start the take, using the take, so we, uh, we can get um, uh, quick Hemostasis after pump off that the, that um, leads to the lead to decrease the amount of uh, 
transfusion and also the amount of bleeding, I think. So you always use the uh, FFP uh, during the cardiopulmonary bypass, and we prepare for hemostasis before we stop the cardiopulmonary bypass. Not a good, uh, uh, that is very effective, I think. Uh, and and you use you use thromboelastic scrap free in in every case of a CPB now in your unit. Yeah. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. every, every case. And how how frequent you 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 check? How how frequent? Mm -hmm. How frequent you use in each case? Uh, every case. Every how frequent? Uh, before start CPB, after one uh, hour, or uh, in ICU? Uh, so I want to uh, only in the, I on, want to check uh, in ICU, but so uh, only in ICU. No, no, uh, only in, in operation. In, in operation, room. but no more in ICU. Yeah, but so I want to do so, but it needs uh, uh, so ten thousand yen. Not all, not all, not all cases. <laughs> so how much is the Thai baht? So I don't know. We, we check the take uh, twice. 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 Before surgery and after pump off. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, the still the, some patient have the coagulopathy after the, the hem, uh, after pump off. We check again. Sometimes, but it's, you know, take is a bit, a bit expensive. So okay. we try to do only two, twice. <laughs> I see. I see. Oh, okay. Okay, no wrong with, yeah, the last um, question. Really nice presentation. Uh, just simple question. Uh, how, how much the test cost for one, for one time? And have, have you ever compared the case uh, with text and non-text, uh, compared the cost? The cost. The money you expend between the case. How how much does it cost for each test? Ten ten thousand yen. Yeah. Yeah, in yen. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's okay in yen. Yeah. Ten thousand yen. Yes. Per test. <laughs> so it, Sorry, yeah, for each test. Each test, yeah. Yeah. How much? Ten ten thousand yen. Ten. Ten thousand. Ten thousand yen. I see. So, but the, the ten thousand ten. It's not covered by the insurance, so we have to <laughs> save the money. Okay. <laughs> we will think about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, all speaker and all audience. And no more paper. May I close the session? Thank you again. Okay.